Hey everyone, yeah, surprised to see me. I am doing a special video for today because the budget was just announced in Parliament a few hours ago and I wanted to take this opportunity to run through the highlights of Rishi Sunak's speech. This will be a high level overview as there is a lot to go through, but I will probably make later videos to touch upon those topics that are a bit more intricate. So without further ado, I'm Karzan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So Rishi Sunak kicked off the speech by painting a picture of what the UK economy currently looks like. The economy itself has shrunken by 10% this year and we have seen the highest amount of borrowing since wartime. So he used this to lay down the foundations and then he moved on to the crux of this year's budget. Now the budget was actually split into three sections. Section one was all about supporting businesses and protecting jobs. Section two was to fix the public finances and then section three was to look at how we can rebuild for a better future economy. So I'm going to split this video into three sections just like he did in the speech and I'm just going to touch upon the highlights of each of those sections. So starting off with section one he announced the extension of the furlough scheme from the end of April this year to the end of September. For employees under this scheme they will see 80% of their salary covered for hours that they have not worked and this will be fully funded by the government until July when employers will be expected to contribute 10% and then for August and September employers will actually have to contribute 20% to this scheme. He also announced that there will be continued support for those that are self-employed in the form of grants with the additional note that a further 600,000 self-employed individuals will now be able to access the grant as the availability has now been widened. He then moved on to confirm that there will be a continued uplift of £20 per week in the universal credit, which helps low income households. He then later announced that he wanted to reaffirm his commitment to low paid jobs. And this was through the increase of the national minimum wage, which will be increased from £8.72 to £8.91 as of today. He also mentioned that he will be doubling incentives for businesses when it comes to hiring apprentices. This is obviously a Way to encourage hiring of the young adult workforce who have been one of the hardest hit when it came to the coronavirus pandemic. When it comes to things like health and education, he said there will be an extra £19 million in funding for domestic violence programs, which I was very glad to hear. Unfortunately, with everyone having to be isolated, uh, the coronavirus pandemic has seen an increase in domestic violence accounts. There will also be an extra £10 million of funding available to those programs that help support military veterans with mental health problems. To help protect the hospitality and tourism sector, Rishi Sunak also committed to extending the 5% VAT reduction until the end of September and rates won't go back to normal until April 2022 with an interim rate of 12.5% for the gap between September and April. The stamp duty tax holiday also saw an extension which saw the deadline for this holiday move from the end of March until the end of June. This is due to the case of a bottleneck that has been occurring within the housing market which saw the closing of house sales um, take an extremely long amount of time because of the coronavirus pandemic so those that were struggling to beat the March deadline now have a bit more breathing space um, to get the deal in by the end of June. We also got more information on the 95% mortgages, which was a scheme announced by Boris Johnson late last year during a Conservative Party conference where he wanted to change a generation rent to a generation buy. Now this new scheme will see the return of the 5% deposit mortgage back onto the market. We did have them over the course of the last few years. However, because of the coronavirus pandemic, banks have been removing this product from their shelves just because they are a slightly more riskier product and they have been asking prospective buyers to have deposits of around about 15%. So government have guaranteed 5% deposit mortgages. Uh, he already announced some banks that will be releasing them uh, in the next couple of weeks. 
they were Lloyd's, NatWest and RBS I believe and he mentioned I think Virgin will also be following in the next few months with some other lenders following suit too. And then to wrap up on this section he also committed to backing the UK's bid for the 2030 World Cup and although this wasn't actually mentioned in the budget at least I don't think it was unless I missed it uh, but it was announced to the press uh, just before that the contactless payment limits will be increased from £45 to £100. By the way if you are enjoying this video so far please be sure to like comment and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. Now moving on to the second section of the budget which was all about fixing public finances. This was obviously a way to address the growing amount of concerns of the amount of money that we have been borrowing to help support businesses and employees as we go through such a difficult time. He actually mentioned that the total cost of the COVID-19 pandemic on the UK government is set to be £407 billion by the end of this tax year. Now he didn't give away too much information on the government's plans to try and reduce the government debt but he did lay their foundations as to what will be guiding these public fixes. So he obviously mentioned that number one it's obviously okay for the state to help finance uh, businesses and individuals while we go through a crisis but once things go back to normal this should not be the case and two that it would be very irresponsible for the government to have the debt continue to increase past the pandemic and number three he also wanted to take advantage of very low interest rates to invest in growth. Now he did move on and announced two measures as to how they will be achieving this. Now I have to say when I was watching the budget sections one and three had a lot more time dedicated to them. Number two was fairly glossed over fairly quickly and obviously for obvious reasons the government didn't really want to say much as to what they were doing. You can obviously tell that in the future years that we will be seeing some drastic cuts coming to the economy. He actually went on further and said that this will probably take another 10 years for us to fully pay back what we have borrowed because of the coronavirus pandemic which will probably leave up to future governments um, to pay back and what shape or form that will take we have absolutely no idea at this point in time but the two measures that he has announced first one being is that there will be no increase in income tax nor national insurance tax however they will be freezing certain allowances the first one being the personal tax allowance which means that you don't get tax on the first £12,500 that you earn this will set to actually increase to £12,570 um, this normally happens year on year to adjust for inflation so they will not be doing it this year um, to save some money. Um, other allowances that will also be frozen is the capital gains tax allowance which allows you to make profit on particular assets um, to a certain threshold before being taxed on it and the pension lifetime allowance which allows you to withdraw money from your pension up to £1,076 based on income tax. If you have any money above that threshold they will be taxed at a ridiculous rate. And then secondly there will be an increase in corporation tax but this will only take effect from 2023. This will see the corporation tax increase from 19% to 25%. However, he has introduced a measure to protect profits for smaller companies, which will see their corporation tax freeze at 19%. In addition, the planned increase in alcohol and fuel duty tax have also been suspended. Then moving on to the third and final section, which was all about how to better the UK's future economy. So one of the first things that he kicked off with was the introduction of a new green infrastructure bank that will be located in Leeds. He said and I quote this bank will invest in public and private projects all across the UK to help finance the green industrial revolution. So he also mentioned that they will be launching a green retail saving product. So this I guess is like a savings account that you and I can put our money into. However this the money that they generate from this savings account will be used to invest in green initiatives. There hasn't actually been much announcement on this. Um, from what I can read online, I know there was a lot of talk about the NS and I green saving bond. I don't know if the two are related. I kind of have the feeling that they are. However, there was no real attempt to connect the two. Um, but um, once we do find out more, I'll be sure to update you all. He then moved on to his ambition to make the UK a scientific superpower um, by introducing the help to grow scheme. This will include projects that will help support people get the correct management skills and digital skills set for this digital scientific resolution as you will. 
and on his final announcement he mentioned the introduction of eight new free ports in the UK. Now I didn't actually know what free ports are so I did a bit of googling. Now from what I understand free ports are locations normally located around shipping ports or near airports and any goods that arrive within these free ports will not be subject to any tariffs. Now we did actually have free ports in the past between the years of 1984 and 2012. We did actually have 12 in the past, now we're getting eight. Now it's understood that the reason why he is bringing these back is to rejuvenate areas that have been deprived in the most recent of years. Now he did go on to mention that this was only achievable because we had left the EU. However, seeing that we did have free ports during a time while we were still with the European Union. I'm not too sure what he meant by that this was only achievable because we had Brexit. Um, so it would be interesting to understand what the taxes were like in the past and if they would follow suit um, in this new era of Freeport. But yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if I have missed anything. Um, yeah, I probably have. <laughs> Cool, so those are the highlights from this year's budget. It'd be really good to hear what your thoughts are on the topic. Were you disappointed? Were you happy? Let me know in the comment section down below. I love having discussions with you all. So yeah, please do leave a comment. And as always, if you found this video really useful and you liked it, I would love it if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my very small YouTube channel. And as always, I normally release a video every Monday. This was an exception. So yeah, if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later.